When I'm not fantasizing about having the type of wealth that buzzlearn.com thinks I have, I like to answer questions and comments that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. I think I first started doing those back in the day, playing Time in a Bottle, the D minor with the on off on the E string. There's that D minor hammer on pull off on E that is in a lot of tunes also. After a while, you just do it subconsciously to color your chords. Keith Richards made a ton of money doing it with chords and open tuning. 75% of Stone songs. LOL Gary. Yeah, so if you missed it, uh, I posted a video last week just kind of like a, a crash course in ham rounds and pull offs and really all you can do with them. Uh, I was more thinking of them in the context of kind of riffs, but also a great kind of companion lesson to that is using them just with chords and kind of like maybe like a singer songwriter vibe, uh, however you want to do it. But yeah, the best way to tell a total rookie on a guitar is if they play a D minor chord like this and they don't pull off on the high E string, right? The every time. I can't not do that now when I'm playing live. In fact, I think one of the more songs, one of the more recent songs that just released on the channel starts out like, is this to D minor? Just pull off, hammer, just like that. Again, there's no, it's impossible for me just to play a static D minor. Bothers me, it bothers me just even as an example gotta pull it off right so real quick i just kind of want to go over how you can do that with all the chords in like a key that you would use and just think of playing this over chords that you already play in any kind of song so just think of the b and the e string open one three open one three okay so this would be like the key of c these notes would be b c d e f g we could go through the main chords in the key of c c major d minor e minor f major g major a minor b half diminished if you want and then just inflect them with that's how we get that pull off on the d minor we could get the c major pull up on the b string and then still do the same thing higher up in fact you actually end up creating a lot of different chords when you do stuff like that okay like remember open one three on the b string when you add that third fret on the b string with my pinky like that now I'm making like a C add nine. You can pull that off. Major seven. All of them. F major. You can do two at a time, which is really fun. Uh, G major. Again, my least favorite one of these is the G seven. I just don't like this. I think I've ranted about this in another video. This G seven right here. No, this it, the this G seven voicing where you have. Uh, the F on top, not about it, not about it. Again, rookie move, same thing. If you go D minor to this G, two, five, one, you've exposed yourself, okay? Do the pull off. Maybe this, okay? So again, it's really just about taking this advice and making it an absolute law in your playing. Never play this G7 and then pull off every single time and make your playing busy as heck. Again, just kidding, that's not the actual lesson. But it's thinking of different things that you can always inflect your chords with, right? Open one three, open one three. It's a way to trick yourself into learning scales without having to actually run scales, which I think is kind of like an issue for a lot of people. So run through those chords, C, D minor, E, F, G, A minor, B half diminished, back to C, and then start just adding, pulling on, pulling off, whatever is on the B and high E string, open one three. Okay, now, you know, if you get that under your belt, maybe you could do different keys. You could go in the key of G and then just make it open one, three, open two, three. Replace all the Fs with an F sharp. And then you're kind of on your way to learning different chord scales and feeling more confident doing things in a more interesting way. Again, not to say that it's better. Sometimes this D minor right here, static, not pulling it off, will do the trick. Again, never once have I witnessed a situation where that is true, but... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know everything, so maybe there exists a world in some kind of parallel multiverse where a D minor triad is actually superior, uh, just leaving that open. Props to Andrea for being able to get through Pompeii. Just listening had me laughing uncontrollably. There's no chance I could actually sing it. So this is on the gig vlog I did uh, the other day where we played a show on Father's Day and it was just one of those audiences that needed to close it with a banger, so we did our original song that we wrote for a school project way back in the day called Pompeii, which is really probably the most educational song that exists on the internet. So I will link you to that video because uh, 
You're going to learn a lot of fun facts about Pompeii and uh, Mount Vesuvius, the volcano that destroyed the city, and also done in a very sing-along, anthemic way. So enjoy. Man, I'm sure you're actually a decent musician, but you're quite full of yourself and you're half-assed drunk or medicated while giving this tutorial. The walking bass part is incorrect on several notes and you're completely omitting the chord progression. This isn't an albatross, it's actually one of Elliot's most simple, straightforward songs. You should be following some lessons on how to play them instead of giving them. This guy sure knows a lot about how to play a song on a video that he's watching teaching him how to play the song. <laughs> That's I've always wondered that, like, I think Happiness by Elliot Smith is actually kind of a, a medium, inter, high intermediate advanced song to play, and uh, something I learned a lot about, but it's definitely a song that, like, you would not just watch a video teaching yourself how to play it if you already know how to play it. Very, very interesting that uh, I would get that comment on that song, but uh, yeah, anyways, check out Happiness. By Elliot Smith because I, I think it's one of the most fun songs to play from a fingerstyle standpoint and I will link you to the lesson in question and uh, you can tell me exactly how I'm teaching it wrong. Sean's singing voice reminds me of a squire not the cheap fenders but the medieval assistant don't know why this is a joke I love you and your channel. Uh, so in the in the gig vlog I also posted a little bit of one of the songs that I was singing and uh, I'll take that as a compliment I think something about making those last two Emerald Riders albums has infected my voice with a bit of squireness. <laughs> so I'm not mad about it. I think it sounds pretty cool. But uh, if you have any, if you have any squire songs you'd like the bard to perform, just leave them in the comments. Your playing is just above average, and her singing is just below average. Well, I guess combined that makes us perfectly average. So apparently, we are we're qualified to uh, to do what we're doing. I've been subscribed to this YouTube channel for some time now, and Sean, your capacity for surprising your viewers seems bottomless. Today's example, a new song inspired by a guitar effects pedal, is extraordinarily beautiful. Thank you and Andrea so much for sharing it with us. Yeah, thank you. So if you missed it, uh, we did a song called Moonpool, which Pigtronics sent me a phaser tremolo pedal, and uh, they kind of asked if we could do something like we did for the Walrus pedal, Juliana, and I don't know, I, I just thought it was kind of a, an interesting challenge to write a song inspired by an effects pedal, and I think it turned out really good, and I think well, Juliana is really good too, and I, I feel like we play those live every show, and people always seem to have a positive reaction to that. And I think just kind of like the main thing about it is, you know, while it's not about like the effects pedal, and it's not as like a, a shameless a shill thing as maybe it seems on the outside, it's just kind of like finding a way to draw creativity and inspiration from anything, right? It can always be, I think it's it's a lot easier to do that when you actually have uh, a limitation to what you're writing or, or performing about, than just being like, I'm just gonna write a song about something. You know, I think it's like, it's, it's just a lot better for me personally to have some kind of handle to hold on to. And I think just having that, that Pigtronics Moonpool uh, pedal, you know, I really just turned it on heard it, it set the vibe for what the song was going to sound like, and then just kind of like drawing, you know, inspiration from personal experiences and then kind of putting it in the world that that, you know, that piece of gear exists in. It was kind of like a really fun exercise to do, and I hope you guys listen to it because, uh, I don't know, it's a song that we're both really proud of, and we're definitely, it's definitely on the live set for the end of time, till the end of time. So uh, check it out if you haven't already, and uh, let me know what you think. So for listening homework, I'm going to throw you to some Tycho. Uh, this isn't newer, but we were just on a road trip up the coast of California, and this was the soundtrack for a lot of it because we lost service, so I just had what was ever saved and downloaded on my phone. Great album, perfect, just kind of like chill music. Check it out. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.